Great. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm here with our famous Roger Connect. He is the founder of Universal Accounting um, Center, and he has a podcast on our channel, and he is also part of our podcast community. So I highly suggest you go over to his podcast and check all his episodes out. He is an amazing individual with a lot of knowledge and expertise in the accounting and business world. And he can really get, give you great advice to help a lot of business owners and you know, go in the right track and set you forth on a, a way that you could actually elevate your business and learn how to have a constructive business where you don't have to kill yourself all the time. And that's what our episode today is gonna to be about. It's gonna be about letting go. And he's going to um, explain a little bit more of what that means. And I'm really excited to have you here, Roger. And I'm really excited to hear about the topic because this is a, a very important topic. I feel like a lot of people just don't know how to let go because their business is their baby, but they also have a family and they also have a personal life that gets affected a lot of times by their business. So tell us a little about your version of what letting go means to you. Well, Stacy, thank you for having me back. And yeah, let's talk about this because I think one of the things that's very natural for business owners is we're typically very passionate about what we do. We're driven. We have a very in intentional thing that we're focused on. And because of that energy that we bring to the business, we we tend to try, more or less justify doing everything. And by doing so, what I'm saying is there's a reluctancy to delegate. And what I want to do here is, first of all, recognize that it is okay to have somebody else do something. You don't have to do the windows, the garbage, you don't have to take out everything. You don't have to be there to open the door, or close the door. And I do believe at some point in the business that perhaps may all be necessary, but the goal is ultimately this. The goal is to build a business that is a self-sustaining living entity that exists aside from the business owner, apart from that business owner in the day-to-day -day operations of the business. So whether or not you feel like you're in that place right now, as you're running your company, that is, or should be the goal. The goal is to actually get to the point where you have not only processes in place that can actually take care of the things to ensure that things are done correctly and right. But you also have people in place that can follow those processes. You've taken what's in your mind, you've created a system that people can follow, and then that ensures that that same product or that same service is delivered to the clients that you have. When you have that, peace of mind can come. You can go on a vacation. You can step away from the business. You can work on the next thing because you've now basically gone through this process of getting someone else to do it. And it's a very simple thing. It's basically, first, of, first and foremost, you want to document. Once you've documented what it is you're doing, you're able to then duplicate. When you've duplicated it and shown somebody else how to do it and they're able to follow that process, you ultimately want to delegate. And in that, you're going to be able to let go and move on to something else that you're more able to do and develop. And a lot of people I find they um, get a little frustrated when people, they'll teach someone to duplicate it and the person doesn't exactly do it the, the way it's taught, but they get the job done and there is no problems. And, but the person that the owner of the business is so used to doing it their way, when they see someone else doing it a different way, they get a little bit bent out of shape sometimes and they can't, you know, it's hard for them to see things done another way. And I think it's important to recognize that, you know, depending on, you know, um, how people are taught, how people, you know, how their brain works, there's a lot of factors that come into play. You know, I think it's important that we, we, you know, recognize that it's okay. If you hire someone, you teach them how to do it, they get the job done, but they don't do it exactly like you. You shouldn't, I think, expect someone to do it exactly like you, as long as the job gets done and it's quality work. I appreciate you bringing that up because it's so very true. At the end of the day, let's focus on what is intended to be accomplished. What's the end goal? What are we wanting done? If we can be very clear and intentional about what it is that they're meant to accomplish, then we can let go of more or less the road they take. There's many ways to get to, let's say, Disneyland. You can take a plane, you can take a train, you can drive there, you can walk there. There's a variety of ways that you can do this. Obviously, some are easier than the others. Obviously, some are more affordable. 
But sometimes what we need to do is step back and realize, well, maybe they're onto something. Maybe they figured out a better way to do it. Just because you did it this way 10 years ago doesn't need, mean that it still needs to be done that way today. And being old as I am, I'm getting older. I'm not old, I guess, but I am getting older. I'm realizing that the younger generation does have a, un a unique way of seeing things. And they're obviously aware of new technologies, tools, tricks, maybe things that they did in school to get things done. And I'm like, my heavens, wouldn't have thought of that. Great example, my son. My son, he has chat uh, GBT on his phone. He's not, uh, he, he's regularly able to see how chat can be a great place to go for information. So we were need to act, needing to find a part for a camper trailer. I was working on a camper trailer. It was a pump that I needed to replace. And he was able to take a picture, send it in, and within a moment, get the answer. And I was like, oh my heavens, I would have gone and tried to Google it. And I would have tried to compare pictures. I mean, I would have gone through this lengthy process to get to the same end result, same result, but yet he was able to get there, get there so much quicker because of a tool he's much more familiar with. Now, now, I've used ChatGPT. It just isn't my go-to thing. It's not how I immediately see this is where I'm going to, going to start. But for him, it is. It's the go-to thing. So we're each able to accomplish the same thing, but the route we took was probably different. And admittedly, his was better. Wow. Yeah, that's exactly the point I'm trying to get across is that a lot of business owners have to recognize that the new generation thinks very differently. Even I remember uh, my children when they went to grammar school, they were learning a different way of doing division and they came home and they needed help. And I was teaching them the old way. And they're like, no, mommy, you're confusing me, you know, because it was the old way that you and I learned in school and they don't teach it the same way anymore, but they get the same answer, the same result. And I think that's what we have to recognize. And, you know, as long as you get the same result and the same quality, you know, that, you know, we have to be open-minded and, and really re realize that there are other ways of doing things, not just the way that we were taught. Yeah. So if we can just be more clear as to what it is we want done and more specific as to maybe the timeline and some of the guidelines that we would have as to cost and so forth, what they're doing and when they're doing it is irrelevant. I've got an employee right now that she's starting to do some things in the evening hours. I can see it because of the emails that I'm receiving. Well, Am I concerned that she did it in the evening versus in the day? Am I aware of the fact that she possibly has a side job that she may be working during the day? Honestly, at the end of the day, it's her day. I've asked her to do a task and she's getting it done by the end of the day, period. Right. Now, if I would like it done by the end of the business day, I need to communicate that. But clearly by the end of the day, she's getting it taken care of. And in reality, I'm fine with that. At the, I, I'm not so concerned as, as to whether or not it's done at nine in the morning versus nine at night. Nine at night, it got done. I'm happy. It's still within the same 24-hour period. She's doing what I asked her to. And that's all that I care about. That's all I should care about. Right, exactly. And I think that's a great point. And in, you know, there are many times where it doesn't matter what time people do it, doesn't matter, you know, how they're doing it, as long as they're getting it done and it's getting done the correct way. And I, you know, what are some other things that you find that are very important when it comes to letting go? Well, first of all, it allows us to step away from the day-to-day -day operations of the business and start working on it again. As a business owner, our job isn't to actually be involved with the day-to-day -day interactions as it relates to customers and so forth. Rather, having the vision of, okay, how are we going to do this differently tomorrow, better tomorrow? What are some of the things we need to incorporate into our processes to improve how things are done, help them be more efficient and profitable? That's the vision that we should be leading with to say, okay, what are we going to be doing differently next quarter, next, let's say next year? Year, that time comes because we've delegated a lot of these day-to-day -day things. So there's a reason for this. It's not just to remove yourself from the work. It's the fact that you're supposed to be working on something else as the owner. And that's one of the things that I'd like to point out, that delegation isn't just because you're supposed to be now going out and golfing and not working, which some people admittedly choose to do. It's your business. You can obviously go to the four-hour work week, and that's entirely fine. But what I'm referring to here is the fact that even though you may be able to free up your time, it's not because you're becoming lazy and everyone else is hustling around you. It's the fact that you're able to now be the visionary that they want to see because it's your company. They're not going to come up with the vision of where the company needs to go next. You are. And so are you going to be that leader that they're expecting them to be? And that gives them confidence in the positions that they have. They know the company's going to be a Around. It's going places. Maybe I can move up in the organ organization. So those are some of the things that I would start to emphasize that basically letting go affords you. Right. And I like that because, you know, a lot of times people have to realize there's so many other important components in the business that an owner should be focusing on if they want 
growth, if they want to elevate to new levels. And, you know, the, their goal should be to work on those things and then delegate the other responsibilities to their employees. This way they have the time to work with, you know, and collaborate with possible um, people who could actually, you know, help and, and connect with their business and help them grow. And, you know, these are things that we have to take in consideration as a business owner. And I think, you know, one of the things is, is you know, delegating and really using that time wisely and, and being able to say, okay, I have like one or two, three hours now because someone else is doing X, Y, and Z. What am I going to do in those one to three hours that could actually be beneficial for my, my company, for my business? And, you know, and think of it more in, in, in a business aspect instead of, you know, thinking it more as in a controlling, you know, boss-like manner, which I think some people have to let go of that. I'm the boss and, and remember you are the mentor and you really need to act like the mentor and be able to, you know, delegate and also take a step back and trust your employees. Yeah. At the end of the day, there are a lot of people doing things in my business today that admittedly are better than I could do them. Now, at one point I did them. At one point I oversaw them, but I'm understanding of the fact that because they do it day in, day out, that they're at this point now better at that position than I am. And that's very right. important to recognize is I'm trying to surround myself with people that aren't intimidated by me because I'm better at whatever they're doing. No, I'm hiring people that are better at what they're doing because I want them to excel and be successful and their success is my success. Therefore, I'm very open and willing to work with individuals that are far more skilled in the various areas that they're hired to, to uh, take care of. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, you know, I've noticed that too with my own business is that there are people who are younger than me that are doing certain tasks for me. And I've done those tasks in the past in my younger days, but they do it far more better than I do. And they do it a lot quicker than I do, which gives me the opportunity to do what I'm good at and, you know, and then get quality work, which they produce, you know, and it, it's a much better way of trying to grow your business than to, you know, try to be in control of everything all the time. Yeah. Now, what are some of the other things that you highly suggest when it comes to learning how to let go and let go successfully? Well, the, well, the big thing that I'm going to bring up right now is the fact that this is easier said than done. And what my point to be to uh, be with this is the fact that there takes time for these individuals to come up to speed. And so, typically, as you're growing the organization, or hiring individuals, delegating things off, there's a learning curve, and this learning curve can take days, weeks, if not months. And because of that, it's an investment by the company. And what typically happens is you're going to be working harder because you're now training someone to do something that used to take you an hour. And because of the training in the time that it's taking from you and them, you're taking longer and they're slower at it initially. And so you're going through this process where the, for the first say month or two or three, I've typically found that my time is stressed. It's harder. I've got to have a long view on this because this, this short team, it's frustrating that they're, they're slow. They're not getting it. And it takes longer than I expect. The second thing is there's a cost. There's an expense. I'm paying this person to do something that they're not good at it, good at right now. And I've not seen the return on investment just yet. It's not freed up my time. I'm not selling more because of the fact that this person's on staff. And so I'm, and I'm likely to see for a month or two that my profit margins may drop. And I might see that I, I'm not as profitable as I once was. And I'm wondering, why am I doing this? I'm working harder. And I'm not making as much. And this is just, it starts to sound like it's insanity. I'm working harder and I'm not making as much. I'm going to do this another month, another month. And you have to have the vision. And so I think it's very important to have the, the means to actually have this transition so that you have the payroll on, on hand to justify the individual being hired so that as you go through this transition and you experience the dip, you don't get frustrated. And then you can actually now say, okay, on the other side of this, I'm going to be better off. I'm going to have more time. I'm going to be able to work on things to make more money and they're going to be more efficient at it than I was. And I'll be able to delegate even more to them than I was able to do in that amount of time because they're even better at it than I once was. So there is a long view, but the long view, sometimes we're too impatient to get there. It's three months, four months, six months out. And that just so, so often just becomes so frustrating. And I just want you to understand as a business owner that it can be worth its while. Now, a big challenge in this entire process is periodically you find that you've hired the wrong individual to do that task and they leave, they move on, they take another position and you have to go through this one more time with the second person. It's just inevitable. It will happen. It is frustrating. It is discouraging. But at the end of the 
day, that's what you're needing to do to grow the business. And so it's not as easy as it sometimes sounds, but I will stress that it is very important. And so for that reason, just understand that you need to go into it, understand it will take longer than expected. And at the same time, you need to be prepared that it's going to take a little bit of a dip in revenue or costs or profits. Some sacrifice financially may appear, but you've got to be able to push through it. And that's why you need to have that vision. You've got to have that passion to push through this because you've got to realize, okay, at the end of the day, I'm not supposed to be doing this. I need someone else to be doing this. This is the right person to be doing this. I need to be patient and let them come up to speed. And that's basically the word to the wise through experience. Right, exactly. And I, I've seen that happen to employees, you know, and employers, you know, and, and the bosses will get, they train them, they invested to train them, they sent them out to, you know, take courses to learn how to do certain things. And over time, that person didn't pan out to be exactly what they expected, or they weren't a team player and other people in the business were getting frustrated because the communication wasn't there, the understanding, the, you know, that, um, you know, solitude in the business where everybody can get along and communicate well and understand each other and know, you know, their boundaries and limits with one another. And, you know, sometimes it's better off, you know, like you give them a certain amount of time. If they're not, if they're not meeting up to your expectations, you know, maybe it's better that, you know, even though, like you said, it's a sacrifice, you might have to invest more money and you might have to retrain this person and it's going to take time. But overall, you know, it might be the better choice. It might be actually in the long run, it, it might help the company, even though at first you might look at it and be like overwhelmed and frustrated, uh, you know, because of the cost and the time it's going to take. But in the long run, it, it might be your for your own benefit. Well said. Very good. Yes. Now, what are some other things that, you know, people can do for, to let go? Because it's very hard for a lot of people to let go. You know, what are some other tips that to help individuals? Because there are companies even out there that teach, com teach um, individuals who own businesses how to let go and how to grow their businesses and even how to, you know, open up more than one business and, and be, be able to take that step back and, and delegate, you know, in a, in a resourceful way. But you know, are there other steps and other components that you also find that are necessary for business owners to actually, you know, take in consideration and implement? Certainly. Yeah. One of the things I would add to this is sacrifice is a very key part of success. Success is basically you have 24 hours in the day, you're going to have to give something up. And I'm not trying to suggest that sacrifice means that this is going to be hard and difficult, but it oftentimes is. And so the reality of the matter is, is there might be a sacrifice of, I'm going to be staying up late at night and working into the, the early morning hours to take care of something that has a deadline. It's not unheard of that you're going to, uh, yes, have freedom when you're running your business, but you're perhaps going to have to, have to miss an activity with friends or family. And there might be something there that you're going to have to excuse yourself from. There might be a hobby and interest that you enjoy that you're going to have to put off for a period of time. And that's unfortunate, but success does require us to make those sacrifices. It's just like exercise. In order for me to exercise, I have to get up early in the morning. I've realized that I can't do it in the afternoon or in the evening hours. So I typically have to get up. I'm not generally a morning person. So when it's dark outside and we're dealing with daylight savings, and it's just one of those things where I don't want to get up before the sun. Why am I waking up when it's dark outside? Why am I leaving my house when I should be in bed? But yeah, I need to go exercise. I'm at that point in my life where I realize that's one of the sacrifices I have to make. Maybe I can't eat like I used to, and therefore it's a sacrifice to have to make. Maybe there's an activity that I have to maybe forego because I have to take care of something as it relates to business. There are things that are going on in life that we're go that is going to require our time and intention and something we'll have to give. And so when you look at the pianist that actually works and you know spends three, four, six, seven hours a day mastering their masterpieces and can play three hours of continuous music, music on the piano, it's because they made that sacrifice to develop that talent. So in business, it's no different. You're just going to have to find a time to give it up. Now, there is a time and a season for all things. After sacrificing today, you're going to have hopefully the freedom tomorrow that you can step away from the business and go to the children's activities. Maybe you can take the longer vacation vacation that if you were employed, you couldn't take off for a month and go to Europe. Well, there are perks that will come from this. And there is a motivation to run your business because of freedoms that it does bring. But understand there will be times where you're going to have to make a choice and it's going to be a difficult choice. And just understand that success does come from 
sacrifice. Yes, so true. So well said. It is, you know, a lot of people um, don't realize that you need to sacrifice, believe it or not. A lot of people, you know, they they want to they want to reach that certain level of success, but they're not willing to make the sacrifices and they're not willing to put in all the time that's necessary. And then they wonder why they haven't elevated to that level. Well, you haven't really made the sacrifice necessary to get to that level. And I think people really have to understand the importance of the word sacrifice. If you really want to grow your business, if you really want to profit, if you really want to get to that level that you really, you know, dreamt about and, and, you know, hope to achieve one day, you have to make sacrifices one way or another. Yeah. I don't know what that sacrifice is for everyone. I know what sacrifices I'm making. I know that I got home late at night. I typically got home at six or seven in the evening, typically would uh, not eat dinner with my family for a number of years, but I did visit with my children once they, once I got home and I gave them my undivided attention for the next one or two hours before they went to bed as, as they were younger. Well, those were things that I consciously did because I was very much into the office first, and I was going to be that first one there, and then I was going to be the last one to leave. Uh, yes, work ethic was something that I was very much driven by, but at the same time, there were sacrifices that were being made. You go to an Olympian, an Olympian, they're working 365 days a year doing their athletics. Why? Because they want to be the best in the world. So find what it is that you're wanting to do and just understand something may have to give and don't regret the fact that you don't have the free time that you used to, to watch that series you watched on television anymore. Maybe read that book that you used to read. Maybe it's the person that you haven't, that you used to see weekly. Now you only see them monthly, whatever the case is, just understand that there's going to be sacrifice. And I don't want you to beat yourself up for the sacrifices you're making. There's a reason for it, but be conscious of the sacrifices you're making so that you can make amends when necessary, or you can reach out and apologize and say, look, I, I don't want you to believe that this is to suggest that you're not important to me. This is just to say right now, I've got a few other things that need my attention, but you're on my mind. And that's what you can say to communicate your, your interest in people. And the same thing could be said about, you know, I love this, this hobby, but I used to do it weekly. I'm going to do it monthly now. You just need to make that conscious effort that this is intentional. I am sacrificing this for a reason and it's for this greater good, if you will. Right. Exactly. That's very well said, because I, I think a lot of people sometimes feel guilt, especially when you have a family and you have children and you're working those late hours and you're coming home late. You know, they they want to you know, they want to provide a great life for their their family, but yet they have to sacrifice certain things. And sometimes people feel guilty. They feel guilty mm -hmm. for not being there for, you know, all these hours that they're missing or they might have to, you know, sacrifice, you know, missing a baseball game or, you know, something where they, you know, they want wanted to be there, but unfortunately other things took their attention and they weren't able to. But I think I like that idea that, you know, communicating and, and expressing to people who mean something to you, you know, explain to them, you know, why you're doing what you're doing and, you know, and even throwing out an apology that you couldn't make it or, you know, this is why, you know, I don't see you all the time, but there's a reason for it. And I, I think that that's a great way to, you know, under have people understand that they're still important to you. They're still on your mind. They're still high up on the podium. It's just that right now, there's certain things I have to tend to, you know, and there's reasons for that. Oh, yeah. Just to give you a great example, I used to work from home where I or not used to I was working from home while we made a few uh, changes here in the office space. Well, because I wasn't commuting to the office, I wasn't seeing my mother for a period of time. And I used to try and see my mother, oh, once a month, once every two or three months, it wasn't, you know, if I went three months, I'd be worried. Well, she's nearby. I just I'm very busy. And so that's how I, I guess I justify it, but I'm going to see my mother today for lunch. And it's because I reached out to her and said, mom, it's been too long. I've been thinking about you. I'd like to go to lunch with you. And so I'll be seeing her today. And it's just basically she's nearby and it's convenient. And I'd like to make it a priority again of seeing my mother, but I've been recently traveling. I was gone two months in, or two weeks in September. I was gone for a, uh, over a week in October. And uh, with all those types of travels and such, it's just been difficult to see my mother. Well, I don't want her to think I've forgotten about her. I, I yeah. want her to know that you're still on my mind and I try to communicate to her. She can call me too. I don't have to always call her. So it is a two way street here, mom. But at the same yeah. time, I want her to understand that she does matter to me and I will make it a priority. Unfortunately, I'll be making, making uh, I'll be seeing her today for lunch. So there you go. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, are there other perspectives that you were thinking about going over when it comes to letting go of your business? Other important factors mm -hmm. that you feel 
need to really understand and, and take to, to heart. There certainly is. There's one last thing that I'd like to emphasize, and, and uh, perhaps we can end on this, and it's the fact that no success can compensate for failure in the home. Uh, this is a quote I was taught years ago. It was something that I was made aware of when I was younger, and it really resonated with me. And, and I really feel that sometimes with sacrifice, family can be the brunt of it all. And oftentimes, as someone is being successful in life, they can really neglect the people nearest to them, spouses, children, siblings, parents. And at the end of the day, these are the people that you're going to be with the, the entirety of your life. I mean, it, it's it's it's, in my opinion, inexcusable to neglect these people that matter so much. They're dependent upon us, both emotionally and, uh, let's say, financially and so forth. So, yes, there's a lot of responsibility there. But at the end of the day, they need to know that they're a priority and that, that they matter. And so I don't know what needs individuals have in certain relationships. Some have more than others. I realize that everyone's unique. But you need to step back and assess, what do they need? Your spouse, are you seeing them in, in a... Uh, a uh, let's say an intimate or personal level on a regular basis, meeting whatever needs are there. I was uh, taught the idea of every week you should go on a date night. And I think that's very appropriate. Are you giving them the attention that they're due? Because you can't neglect them and assume that in that sacrifice, things are going to remain the same. They're, they're not. You have to invest in them. And so there's a lot of allure that can happen in business that can draw individuals away from family. That success can be very, uh, not only compelling, but at the same time, it's very addictive. Well, we need to recognize that sometimes those sacrifices that may be going on in the home are too much. And so I do want to stress that there's really no success that can compensate for failure in the home. And I know that there's many listening here who have experienced those unfortunate tragedies of divorce and so forth. I, I'm not trying to say that uh, uh, there's any reason to beat yourself up anymore, but I'm trying to say recommit, refocus, find the way in which you can step back and say, you know what, I need to put priorities where they are. Because honestly, at the end of the day, the business, you will eventually step away from it. You will sell it. It will continue on in your absence hopefully, but your family relationships don't end. They don't cease. They don't go away. They're always going to be there. And so put the time, the attention in there, make it a priority to reach out to your children, your siblings, your spouses, uh, or your spouse and your, your uh, parents. These are the types of relationships that you're going to have through the entirety of your life, friends and, and neighbors and so forth. They all ebb and flow. They're all going to kind of come and go, but from a family relationship standpoint, be attentive, be aware, and make sure that they, they know that for you, they are a priority, even in that imperfect state that we tend to maybe take home some of the frustrations and and take them out and, and verbalize them or become distant because we're scared and frustrated. At the end of the day, go to them and let them know they matter. They're important. I'm sorry. And uh, with all that, hopefully what you'll do is mend those relationships, build those relationships, foster those relationships. And at the end of the day, have someone to look at it the, uh, in the evening hours, if you will. I love it. I love it. Now, if we had to take today's conversation and you wanted to, you know, emphasize on some important factors that we have talked about today, what are some of the things that you'd like to point out to our listeners? First of all, that to grow and run the business, I feel you do need to delegate. You have to build an entity, a business that is self-sustaining, that is operational outside of your day-to-day -day involvement. So that's the first thing. In order to do that, you have to be willing to let go. In order to let go, you need to document you need to duplicate, and then you need to delegate. Those are the three steps. I think that's something that you really need to focus on. In doing so, it'll allow you to focus on the things that matter most, which is the vision, the direction of the company, where is it going, being that leader that you need to be. In this process, sacrifice will be essential. Something has to give. We all are human, so we have to prioritize. And there's a time and season for all things. So right now, it might be that you're hustling in your business, and that's perfectly fine. Just let the people know that you've not, you know, forgotten about them, that uh, you do have to recharge. I'm very much a fan of taking personal time. I do believe in taking vacations or uh, finding ways to disconnect from the business. It's very therapeutic mentally and physically. Uh, take care of yourself. And then lastly, it's the whole idea of family. I, I really uh, really do want to emphasize that there are key individuals in your life and they need to know that they are who they are to you. So just communicate that. I like that idea. I think that's a great idea. I, you know, I, 
Now, there is so much that you, you do. Um, can you tell us some of the great services that you provide? Because you have a wealth of knowledge and you also have the Universal Academy Center. And so can you tell us a little about all the different services and a little about the Universal Academy Center? Yeah, so Universal Accounting Center, we're a post-secondary school for accounting professionals. We basically offer a variety of trainings, courses, programs for individuals who want, who want to excel in their accounting career. We have people that are actually in the process of starting and building their accounting businesses with whom we work. We're basically ensuring that they're able to offer quality services. We're training their staff, giving them the uh, confidence they need to offer those bookkeeping, accounting, tax type things that your client that their clients would expect. My focus is basically to help them build what I refer to as the premier accounting firm in their area. Now, clearly with all this, in addition to the skills, we have things that are teaching marketing, sales, uh, we're focusing on mental health, we're addressing things as it relates to advisory services. So just a number of things that really apply to the business world, especially the accounting world. And then as it relates to the business, what I do is business coaching services. It's a division of our company called Universal Business Builder. And it's there as a business coach that I work with my clients and actually help them implement these strategies and many others that I actually actually emphasize. So we typically will do a 12 to 24, perhaps 36 month engagement. And it's in those months that we actually work on the business, helping them not only learn, but apply these principles in their companies. And so in the division, Universal Business Builder, we work as basically business coaches. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, where can people um, uh, go to your website? Where can they find you? Love to have you connect with me. First of all, on LinkedIn, just mention that you heard us on this conversation here in this podcast. Happy to connect with you on LinkedIn. I think that'd be awesome. But you can also go to universalaccounting.com at universalaccounting.com in the navigation. You'll find, first of all, free resources. These are free resources for business owners. It's some um, eBooks that you can actually use that teach the principles that I've been mentioning. We also have a number of white papers, reports, uh, assessments that you can take that I'd highly recommend. Each of these are available for free. And so I definitely encourage you to check those out. And then clearly, as uh, was mentioned earlier, I host a podcast called, called Building the Premier Accounting Firm. There are in the navigation highlights, uh, basically playlists and so forth that you can find. Uh, you can find this episode here as, uh, as I've guessed it here. But the thing that you'd really want to understand is although the show is called Building the Premier Accounting Firm, clearly the principles are oftentimes just business related. And so as a business owner, I'm sure you'll find many applicable things that you can learn from and apply in your business from there. I love it. I love it. Well, this has been wonderful. I, I really enjoyed this today's conversation and I feel it's well needed because I feel like so many people that I talk to have that, you know, they struggle with letting go. So I, I think the advice you gave today was really beneficial. And I think many people can, you know, use it to help them, you know, learn how to let go and, and learn how to actually, you know, use those steps and apply them to, to their own business so they could actually grow and and get you know grasp those goals that they they want to attain so thank you so much for coming on the show i really appreciate you and uh, i look forward to our future conversations thank you well it's been a pleasure and for everybody out there that's a disney fan i'm sure somebody's broken out and sung out loud let it go let it go so there you go uh but with that said yeah always remember this if it's about accounting it's universal and if it's about business it is universal so take uh, advantage of all these things that we've discussed here in this, these different podcast uh, episodes and uh i wish you the best have a wonderful day and be safe out there thank you you have a great day